Okay, I'm on a Bible journey. I did the Bible in 30 days, the whole thing through. So you're going to, I'm going to embrace everybody into this journey. So enjoy it as I flap my gums super fast. <laughs> Um, Second Chronicles 33 through 34, 33. Afterward, he Manasseh rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of the Gihon Spring in, val in the valley, as far as the entrance of the Fish Gate and encircling the hill of Ophel. He also made it much higher. He stationed military commanders and all the fortified cities of Judah. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Holy Lord, as well as the all the altars he had built on the temple hill and in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Holy Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offerings on it. And he told Judah to serve the Holy Lord, the God of Israel. The people, however, continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Holy Lord, their God. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including the prayer to his holy God and the words and the seers spoke to him in the name of the Holy Lord of Israel, are written in the annals of the kings of Israel. His prayer and how are and how our holy God was moved by his entreaty, as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness, and, and the sites where he built the high places and set up the Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself. All are written in the records of all the seers. Manasseh rested with his fathers and was buried in his palace, and Ammon, his son, succeeded him as king. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Holy Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon worshipped and offered sacrifices to all the idols Manasseh had made. But unlike his father, Manasseh did not humble himself before the Holy Lord. Ammon increased in his guilt. Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated him in his palace, and the people of the, whole, of the land killed all who plotted against King Ammon, and they made Josiah his son king in his place. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem, 31 years old. He did what was right in the eyes of the Holy Lord and walked in the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the Holy Lord, the God of his father. In his twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, astral poles, carved idols, and cast Im images under his direction. The altars of the bells were torn down. He cut the pieces he cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the Asherah poles, the idols and the images. These were broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars, and so he purged Judah and Jerusalem in the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim and Simeon, as far as Naphtali, and in the ruins around them. He tore down the altars of the Asherah poles and crushed the idols to powder and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign to purify the land and the temple, he sent Shaphran and Azaliah and Masaiah, the ruler of the city, with Joah, son of Joahiah, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Holy Lord. They went to Hilkiah, the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple of God, which the Levites who were the doorkeepers had collected from the people of Manasseh, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, and from all the people of Judah and Benjamin, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they entrusted it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the Holy Lord's temple. These men paid the workers who repaired and restored the temple. They also gave money to the carpenters and builders to purchase dressed stone and timber for the joists and beams for the buildings at the king's of Judah had allowed to fall to ruin. The men did the work faithfully over them to direct them were Jahath and Obadiah, Levites descended from Merari and Zechariah and Meshushalam descended from Kohath. The Levites, all who were skilled in playing musical instruments, had charge of the laborers and supervised all the workers from job to job. Some of the Levites were secretary, scribes, and doorkeepers. While well, they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Holy Lord. Hilkiah the chief priest found the book of the law of the Holy Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Holy Lord. He gave it to Shaphan. Then Shaphan took the book of the king 
took the book to the king and reported to him, Your officials are doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid off the money that was in the temple of the Holy Lord and have entrusted it to the supervisors and the workers. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest was given, has given me a book, and Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Abdon, son of Micah, Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah as the king's attendant. Go inquire of the Holy Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Holy Lord's anger that has been poured out on us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Holy Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. Hilkiah, those the king had sent with him, went to speak to the prophet, the prophetess Huldah, who was a wife of Shalom, son of Tokah the son of Hashra, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the second district. She said to them, This is what the Holy Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent, who sent you to me, This is what the Holy Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in this book that has been, that has been read in the presence of the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to the other gods and have made my anger And my anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Holy Lord, this is what the Holy Lord, the God of Israel, says, concerning the words that you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before our holy God when you heard what he spoke, what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes <coughs> and, wept in, and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Holy Lord. Now I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. So they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Holy Lord with the men of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the, turning the page, people from the least to the greatest, he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which he had found in the temple of the Holy Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant of the presence of the Holy Lord to follow the Holy Lord and keep his commandments, regulations, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul and obey the words of the covenant, the holy covenant written this, in this book. Then he had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledge themselves to it and the people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of our holy God the God of their fathers Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the territories belonging to the Israelites and he had all who were present in Israel serve the holy Lord their God as he lived they did not fail to follow the holy Lord the God of their fathers okay Romans 6 8 through 27 greet Apliatus whom I love in the Lord greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachys, greet Apelles, tested and approved in Christ, greet those who belong to the household of Aritobulus, greet Herodian, my relative, greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord, Narcissus, that's interesting, greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Holy Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Holy Lord, and his mother who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and their brothers with them. Greet Philo, Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister Olympus, and all the saints with him. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ, our holy Christ sent greetings. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our holy Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The holy God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our holy Lord Jesus be with you. 
Timothy, my fellow worker, sends his greetings to you as Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my relatives. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Holy Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality and I and the whole church here and joy sends you his greetings. Arrestus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus send you their greetings. Now to him who is able to establish you by the Holy Gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the nations might believe and obey him, to the only wise holy so the only holy God be glory forever through our holy Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 26, 1 through 12. Of David, vindicate me, O holy Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the holy Lord without wavering. Test me, O holy Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, not nor do I consort with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocent and go to about your altar, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling all your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O holy Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hands are full of bribes, but I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground in the great assembly. I will praise the Holy Lord. Amen. That was Psalm 26. Proverbs 20:19. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. Okay, I'm embracing everybody into my studies. Have a blessed day. Going to start recording my next one.